Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. The Indians got another gem from Corey Kluber. Unfortunately, Chris Sale was on his A game as well. Each team scratched out a run through nine innings. But in the end, the White Sox walked it off for the second time this year against Cleveland. Pitching was the story last night, and it could very well be a pitcher's duel again. Trevor Bauer goes head-to-head with Jose Quintana next on Sports Time Ohio. Chicago, Illinois, a city bustling with activity tonight from U.S. Cellular Field on the south side. The Indians will try to even up this four-game series at a game apiece. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Last night, we saw another brilliant pitching performance on both sides. Corey Kluber was outstanding. Chris Sale was very good. They both wound up with no decisions in the affairs. It went to extra innings. Chicago prevailed. Once again, here tonight, very good pitching matchup on paper. Trevor Bauer hasn't even allowed a run on the road yet this year. And Jose Quintana, well, the Indians have never beaten him. Well, he's pitched very well. Trevor Bauer coming off a no decision, allowing just one run to the St. Louis Cardinals. He's pitched twice against the White Sox. Pitched six innings the first time. He got a win. Pitched seven innings the second time. Didn't allow a run. They scored four and a ninth and took him off the hook. He should be 2-0 and against the Sox. On the year, he's 2-1. and He's pitched very well. 367 earned run average. He'll be matched up against left-hander Jose Quintana. 2-3 and three on the year, but he has the Indians number. He's 4-0 and in his career. This is a left-hander. He doesn't walk a lot of batters. He comes right at you. He's not overpowering. He will mix his pitches up. Left-handers have three hits off him on the year, and they are over his last 25. The two left-handers that have the hits, Hosmer has two, Bustakas has one. So the Indians have their work cut out for him today if they want to get on the board early. Seems like when the Indians have had success against Quintana, it's been here in Chicago even though they haven't been able to hang a loss on him as of yet. So, how do the Indians bounce back from that tough loss of a night ago? We'll find out from Andre Dott when we return to U.S. Cellular Field right after this. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
in Chicago. Temperature has plummeted from 24 hours ago. It is downright cold here this evening. White Sox, though, are white hot. They've won six in a row and eight out of nine. They're above 500 on the year. The Indians, on the other hand, were headed in that direction. They had won two in a row in Texas. They'd won three out of four. They were swinging the bats well. And then all of a sudden, the offense vanished. They've scored two runs in their last two games. Let's go downstairs to Andre Knott to maybe get a gauge on the, the mood or the collective psyche of this ball club headed into tonight's game. Roller coaster to say the least, Matt, and the, all the momentum halted, it seemed, in Sunday in Texas. And last night we had a classic game that a lot of people will remember, but inside the clubhouse it was a tough one to take because they felt like that was a game they should have won when their ace pitched as good as they did. Now David Murphy and the team talk about having to bounce back after that great game last night. I guess the pitcher's duel last night, kind of as you would expect. Um, yeah, some nights you can get frustrated for, for not putting runs on the board. Last night, facing a guy like that and, and the stuff he had, um, you can get over it. You know, you want to get the win regardless, especially when you have the lead later in the game. But uh, it just happens. You know, they uh, Eaton makes a uh, ends up being a smart move. Seemed crazy at the time, but it worked out for them. And then they get the big hit in the end. So, uh, yeah, it's a tough loss, but uh, I think this group will bounce back. Well, it's a classic pitcher's duel. The Indians had the lead early. They did the little things. They got the man out over, got him on, got him over, got him in. They had a one nothing lead. And for Adam Eaton, Murphy, uh, he downplayed it. That was a great play by Eaton because he was safe. And that tied the ball game up. And then they got the big hit to win it. All right, we're back with the first pitch. Indians, White Sox, game two in this four-game heavyweight matchup. Coming up next. the throw. He is saved. He's coming home, and he is safe at the plate. Rayburn on the run. Makes the catch. Double play ends the inning. Fair ball, Chicago wins it. Well, it was a wild game last night. Well played. A lot of fun. Very entertaining. Tremendous pitching. And in the end, Chicago came out with the victory. So let's get a look at the Indian starting lineup tonight for Terry Francona. It is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis will lead it off, followed by Jose Ramirez. 
Michael Brantley batting third, hitting 463 with men on base this year. Ryan Rayburn, Nick Swisher, Mike Avilas occupy the middle third. Then it's Brandon Moss, Roberto Perez, and Michael Bourne. Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher is Jose Quintana. The 26-year-old lefty making his eighth start of the year, his third at home, and his second against the Indians. He, uh, that start against the Indians, he beat them. That was at Cleveland. He went six innings, three hits, and one run. It was an unearned run, but he's coming back at it again. 4 0 in his career against the Tribe. And in his last start, he beat the Brewers and ended a four game uh, decision streak. He had losses and a no decision. First pitch of the night is a little bit outside. Ball one to Jason Kipnis. Sounded like it broke his bat. It, it's going to go over Garcia's head. He came rushing in and the ball sailed over his head. Kipnis headed for third. He'll go headlong in there safely with a leadoff triple on a ball that was just simply misjudged in right field by Garcia. Boy, it certainly was. He came uh, running in like he had to come after that ball instead of sort of keeping his uh, just planted, stay right there. He came running in and then realized, hey, that ball's over my head. Well, it sounded like it, it broke his bat. It looked like it was hit off the end, but yeah. obviously he hit it harder than Garcia realized. Yeah, that's a mistake right there. That's going to be a gift triple, and with Indians will take it, so will Kipnis. Now can they take advantage? Jose Ramirez steps in. And he fouls it out of play. Ramirez was two for three last night. And he had a clutch sacrifice fly that gave the Indians the lead. In a similar situation. Chops it foul. And now he's in the hole 0 and 2. Yeah, one away, uh, one in. That was that little breaking ball coming down and in. You can see Ramirez three for seven in his career against Quintana. Breaking ball low and in the dirt. Nicely blocked by Flowers. Well, that's what your heads up for if you're Kipnis on third because he's getting him trying to get him to chase that breaking ball in the dirt. Now the one two went down and in again. And it counts even at two balls two strikes. So nice job by Ramirez to lay off. Well, down there twice. See if he goes up and away now, where he got him to swing it at least the first strike. He fouled it off. Nope, coming back in. And he gets a piece of it. They don't want to give him any breathing room. Michael Brantley waiting on Dick. You know, mentioned the last night Ramirez hit 298 last year in 40 plus games that he batted in the two hole. And what do you know he goes into that spot last night and has a big night. With a couple of hits off one of the toughest lefties in baseball. Watch him go back inside. Look at it on our Nissan pitch tracker. It's low. Down and in. Now the payoff pitch ball four. Well I know it's a small sample size but he's had good at bats in this two hole now in the last couple of games. Let's check out that Sox defense brought to you by Chrysler. It's Cabrera in left Eaton is in center Garcia over in right Gillespie at third Ramirez at short Sanchez is at second Abreu at first Flowers doing the catching Garcia out in right field six outfield assists. Already in this young season. Crew chief Larry Vanover's at second base. Brian Knight has the plate tonight. 
Dale Scott, Ron Copel are at the corners. Well, here's Michael Brantley now. Just told you a moment ago when he gets men on base, he's batting 463. 412 with runners in scoring position. There aren't many categories where you look at Brantley and say, whoa, boy, that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, you got the right man in the right spot. And you're in the first inning. So let me ask you, you you being a left-handed hitter, not that you ever faced four lefties consecutively because we know, we know how rare that is in a series. But facing a guy that like sale last night, does that prep you for every other lefty that well, you face after that? They're different, different styles. You know, the slinger last night, that guy's about as good as you can get. This guy's more conventional. He, he's not tough on lefties because he comes from the side. He comes right up back here over his ear, you know, and he, he moves it in and out. That guy last night is about, is about as tough as you're going to face when it comes to a left-handed pitcher. So once you face him, oh, everybody else should be a little easier. You right? would think so. <laughs> you would certainly think so. I mean, the the arms, the legs, the deception is not there with this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that can throw you out of whack. He's very conventional, nice and fluid, and he yeah. repeats his delivery. He has good control. And it's not that Sale throws that much harder than Quintana, but it just seems like he does because the ball gets Taking on you up quicker, the baseball, maybe. and he, he has a, a, a better slider, and he's got an outstanding changeup too. Yeah, he's, he's top notch. We saw two Cy Young caliber pitchers go at each other last night, and that's exactly what we we thought we were going to get. They were both terrific. And it, it, it looked like to me sale was up for the. The fight against Kluber knowing that he he's not going to have he can't give up much and, yeah. and the Indians struck first. But the way Kluber pitched last night to get a no decision is a shame because the run that scored on him was on a wild pitch. Bradley sends a fly ball to center field fairly routine here for Eaton. Kipnis will tag. He's coming home. The throw is cut off, and the Indians take a one-nothing lead. Brantley with RBI number 23. Jason Kipnis with that leadoff triple on the ball that was misjudged by Garcia gets home with the Indians' first run. Let's go down to Andre, who has more on. Jose Quintana what the Indians hitters were telling him the one thing they brought up is the velocity is different from sale last night but he short arms the ball a little bit and is a little unconventional the ball sneaks upon him so velocity may not be the same but at the same time they said the ball gets on him just as quick huh. so not to say you guys are wrong but that's some of the point what the players were saying today before the game and he can pick up the velocity when he needs to that's something else to pay attention as the game goes along you know that's the, the thing you, you can sit and watch somebody pitch and you can pick up the baseball but until you get in that little white box you don't know, yeah. you know, how well he hides it. I say he comes right back from here, and that could be called a little short arm where the ball will get on you a little quicker. And I totally understand that. Runner goes, throw down a one hopper, but he almost Ramirez hit with it. <laughs> Beats it up for his sixth stolen base on the year. Yeah. I like that. This ball almost gets Quintana in the back. Watch him. He's going to get down. He doesn't realize how close it is. So I, I like to see the aggressiveness here. Do it early in the count. So now Rayburn has a chance with the runner in scoring position. You know, Ryan's season batting average is identical to his average with runners in scoring position, batting 316. And of course, most of his at bats have come against the Southpaws. He's batting 375 against lefties. Yeah, he has a few token at bats against right. He's what, three or four at bats, and that's it. Quintana gets ahead with a, or a evens account, I should say, with a strike one and one. Got nine at bats against righties. Ramirez was going to go for third, and Quintana deked him with the inside move. Two down. I don't know if Quintana picked up on that or if he simply was going to second all the way. 
Well, I'll tell you right now, he was going to second all the way. Just to, you know, there's your second baseman right there, Sanchez, that's in the area. And that you just have to read that better than what Ramirez did. If he was trying for third, you have to make sure he goes. There's no reason to steal third. You're in scoring position. Well, that's a so big one, out. Two one good out. deed and one bad deed right there. Two and two the count on Rayburn. Strikes him out. Inning over. But Jason Kipnis has the Indians on the board first. The leadoff triple leads to the game's first run. The White Sox are coming to bat. Right field, and yeah, it looked like Quintana said, "That's all right, we'll get it back." Yeah, well, he's patting them on the back. They they did get the one. It was a gift run, but they certainly take it. Robin Ventura starting lineup presented by Toyota. Adam Eaton at the top spot, riding a seven-game hitting streak with a dozen hits. Malky Cabrera second, then Jose Abreu third. He's hit in 13 in a row. Adam LaRoche, Avisel Garcia, Connor Gillespie. Then it's Alexei Ramirez, Tyler Flowers, and Carlos Sanchez. Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher is Trevor Bauer. You can see he's two and one this year, making his eighth start. He's pitched great on the road. Two starts, hasn't allowed an earned run. And one of those starts was right here in Chicago. Two balls and a strike. And Bauer comes back to even the count. Belt high strike. That's good if you can get that strike there because that'll make that curveball that he throws. That much more effective where it starts out and it breaks down out of the zone. That's low to full count. The payoff and a one hop smash to short. Ramirez throws him out one down. Let's check out that Indians defense, which is brought to you by Chrysler. It'll be Brantley Bourne and Rayburn in the outfield. It'll be Avilas, Ramirez, Kipnis, and Moss on the infield with Perez doing the catching.
Melky Cabrera is on a pretty good run right now. He's hitting five straight games. After he went through an 0 for 14 spell, he's collected eight hits now in his last 19 at bats. Well, this guy, uh, when he gets it on a roll, he can get hot as well. And that's the one thing you want to keep eating. Who's been down and had a, a slow year so far offensively, and this guy off the bases for Abreu and LaRoche. The 2 0 pitch. Pop foul, maybe playable for Avilas. Yes, he will get there. Two down. The keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Solve a left handed starter, something that has been difficult for the Indians to do this year. And for Trevor Bauer, that fastball command always so important. It is early in the game because we remember last year he had trouble in the first inning. And it seems like he gets better as the game goes on, and it all revolves around his fastball command. He usually reels it in as the game goes along. But it'd be nice to see him start a game out with it. Right from the very first pitch. Spike that one in front of the plate. Well, coming into tonight, the Indians have faced the same number of left-handed starters home and road. Seven at home, seven on the road, two and five both spots. So four and ten overall against left-handed starters. And of course, they're going to see one not only tonight, say. but tomorrow and the next day. And two to go. Oh, yeah? When we get back home in Cincinnati. No, Thursday, today, tomorrow, oh. and the next day. Oh, I got yeah. I don't know what uh, Cincinnati's got on, in store for him. Okay, we got leak pitching. That's a righty. Okay, I thought you said today, tomorrow, and the next day. I thought you meant Friday. <laughs> There's a pitch popped back out of play today. Tomorrow and the next day. That I'm already, Thursday. Today's already started. <laughs> I, I, there's a left yard. I guy. threw you off with today. <laughs> I should have gone with tomorrow and the next day. Exactly. Jose Abreu, a 13 game hitting streak. Bumped his average up to 293 overall. Did he chase? He did not go, says first base umpire Dale Scott. She seems like lately, Rick, if they even start that bat, they get wrong. But it looked like he did. Jim. Yeah, he, he, he was able to hold up. Full count. Bowers 3-2 pitch. And a fastball is fouled off by Abreu. Pretty good fastball down and away. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. He got him with a breaking ball. And the inning is over. Sox go 1 2 3. Bauer gets his first strikeout after an inning. Cleveland 1, Chicago nothing.
A moment ago before we uh, came back from break here. Tyler Flowers on the throw down the second almost clipped Quintana for the second time tonight. And this time it was a lot closer than the first and Quintana shot a look back at him. As if to say what are you doing trying to take me out. <laughs> Nick Swisher to lead off for the tribe here in the second. 0 for 3 last night with a walk. Takes a strike. Oh, we've got a shot of it, Rick. Oh, that, that figures. These guys don't miss a beat. All right, just throwing it down to second. He'll get out of the way. <laughs> now watch Quintana look back at him. <laughs> Swisher lines it in the left field. He's got a base hit, a leadoff single for the Indians here in the second. Our window systems game time temperature tonight 50 degrees clear and cold and it's already dropped to 48 from when we started the game. Yeah it was uh, chilly on the field before the game during batting practice it was the wind is coming in it's. Well, the local weather you know, it was uh, totally different than what it was yesterday. Oh. Complete difference. And according to the local weather uh, gal I was watching on TV today all because of the wind the wind has shifted it's coming out of the northeast so it's coming right over the water where that water isn't warm yet. <laughs> and so it's bringing it looks all that warm, cold air is. right into Chicago area temperatures are 20 degrees below normal for this time of year. Up high. Two balls no strikes. Right back to Quintana. He'll go to second. They get one on the first double play. That's the call on the field. We'll see if Frank Kona challenges it. He's Mike Avila says, I'm not leaving first base. I think I was safe. Well, that's all right. He's going to stay there. He's looking for his manager. They're going to go back and look at a replay until they see something happen. They did get the guy at second. And they're going to wait around and let's see what happens. Quintana made a good throw. It looked like uh, Avilas was going to beat it out. I'm going to have wow. to say he might have been, but that's a tough angle. We didn't see the ball go in the glove that way. But uh, there, look at, they're staying there. They, well, Avilas is looking. They're still, they're still trying to get word on what to do. And now they well, say bring him in. Right, you got to get off the bank. You only have like 30 seconds. And I mean, I know you can stall, but they didn't want to challenge it because maybe they just didn't have a good enough view of it to see it. We didn't. Yeah, a tough. With that angle, you can't see where the ball goes. No, in you can't. Uh, so they're not going to overturn it. Let's check it out now. That looks safe there on that angle. But well, it does now, but <laughs> you only have 30 seconds to get it done. And you know, in the second inning, it, you don't necessarily want to burn your challenge unless you're convinced. Well, y you want to win it, so you have another one. You, you know, you can keep it going. You don't want to lose it on right. a play like that. A little bit low, two and two. Strikes out, inning over. Middle of the second. One nothing Cleveland.
back in 2015 with a MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download the MLB.com at bat, uh, number one app for live baseball. Second inning, Adam LaRoche will lead off for Chicago. Swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Left field, routine for Brantley. One down. Time now for the Buick stat of the game coming into tonight. White Sox have scored first in 11 games this year. The Indians have done it in 15. Hard to believe there's, there are two teams in the American League who have done it fewer than Cleveland. Well, and they've done it, uh, what, three times in the last, uh, yeah, or four times in the last five games. They did it uh, the, the first two in Texas. They did it here tonight. Last night, they scored first, obviously. Right. Swing and a miss by Garcia. back. Garcia did not score the game winning run last night because he was removed in the bottom of the 10th after a leadoff walk because of right knee inflammation. JB Shuck came in as a pinch runner and would eventually score the winning run. Yeah we found it hard he ended up drawing the leadoff walk. Swing and a miss and strikes out ball. here. Second K for Bauer two down. Both coming on the curveball tonight. It's going to be our circle K strikeout. Here's a good curveball. You see where that starts? It starts a little bit above the belt. It's got good bite, 12 to 6 spin going down. And if that's why that high fastball by Trevor could get by hitters up here, you see it starts at the same spot when he can put you away with that curveball. Connor Gillespie takes a look a little slider over the outside corner. Gillespie in his last eight games has collected 10 hits and 29 at bats. Seems like he always hits well against the tribe two for four last night. Michael Bourne calling for it. One two three. Goes Chicago. Six up six down for Bauer through two Cleveland one White Sox nothing.
It's going to be a dollar dog night and also a fireworks night on Friday, the first one of the year. Reds in town all weekend. Just go to Indians.com for your ticket details. Roberto Perez is going to lead off here in the third for the Cleveland Indians. Then Michael Bourne, followed by Jason Kipnis. Perez won for four last night, doubled and scored the Indians' only run. Bounces this one up the middle, and that's through. Now, well, third straight inning, they've had their leadoff man aboard. Injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Victor Martinez goes on the DL, that right knee injury that yep. looked like he initially tweaked it against the Indians early this season. He's been trying to battle through it. Now, I, uh, did you see him go down the line and run into first base? Yeah, it didn't look good. Did not look good. Yeah, I think uh, Perez has got this, the steal sign on the very first pitch. <laughs> Isn't it funny how they get programmed or they just throw over yeah. there? Yeah, look at he's smiling about it. He's talking to Obreu. What are you doing throwing over here with me? A strike called on Michael Bourne. Looked like he pulled it back, but it was in the zone. Roberto Perez came into this series. He had two hits and 27 at bats. Now two for five against the White Sox in this series. Warren sends a pop to center. Back goes Eaton. One away. Here's our AT&T U-verse rewind. In the first, Jason Kipnis off the end of the bat. Fooled Garcia who came charging in. It was over his head. Kipnis goes into third with a triple. And then Michael Brantley drives one to center field, plenty deep enough to get Kipnis home, and that's the game's lone run. Now here's Kipnis again. He has hits now in 10 of his last 11 games. 22 for his last 42. No, well, he's always come into this ballpark and hit very well since uh, he was a rookie. Certainly being from here, family, friends in the stands help. And he'll always love to come here. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> Roberto Perez again casting a glance of disbelief in the direction of Jose Quintana. That hit he gave up to Kipnis in the first inning was only the fourth hit he gave up to a left hander all year long. They were over their last 25 in his last six starts. Although it was aided and helped by Garcia, but it still goes down as a base knock. He has been tough on lefties this year. Not too that one off of his front foot. And the one thing about Quintana too for not being an overpowering pitcher you're going to get a look at this one again that's going to hurt. Oh that's right off the knee. The, yeah above the pad. Right off the old shin bone yeah, it looks like. That's not good. 
But Quintana doesn't uh, give up many home runs. Gave up just uh, yeah. about 13 since the start of last year. Yeah. Ten all of three. last year, three so far I, this season. I know, season. and he keeps it in the ballpark. And this is a pretty good home run park, you know, once the, the summer gets here and the weather warms up. Oh, man. That's Sounded the like last it hit thing the, bat. the Indians needed. I think Kitten has got it right on the wrist. That's what he's holding. Oh boy, it oh boy. sounded like it hit the bat, didn't it? It really did. Which is why I'm thinking it's not good. Yeah. See, that's what Ventura is coming out. He wants to talk to home plate umpire Brian Knight about. Take a look. That's so hard to tell. I'm sure it got a piece of the hand, a good piece of the hand. Maybe it did get a piece of the bat because that's what we heard. But I'm going to tell you what, it didn't feel good. And look at as soon as that ball comes back, you can see him grimacing. <laughs> that hit yeah. him right in the hand. I'm with you, Rick. It probably got the barrel. I mean, it probably got the knob, but it'll definitely hit the yeah, hand. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's just aided because there's no give right there, and that's what the sound comes from. And he's looking down. That certainly did get him. He's been hit a lot, it seems like this year. Well, he was hit twice in the one game yeah, against uh, St. Louis. Louis. Once, I think, in Texas. And now once well, here in Chicago. Swinging the bat like he is. It's they try to pitch you inside a little bit more. That's his fifth time this year. Two on, one out. Jose Ramirez at the plate, and he takes ball one. Mentioned it during his his first uh, at bat. He's had better looking at bats in these last two games now. Batting in the two hole. Whether or not that whether or not that's coincidence or just a different focus based on where you're hitting in the order now. More traffic. Let's go down to Andre. You might have more to add on. Bit. You know, I'm talking to different people within the team. They want Jose Ramirez to play with more confidence. As you guys know, and I don't know if the fans know, they call him George, as in George Jefferson, when he's got that strut going. And the team wants him to go back to being that guy and being disruptive on the play on the when he's out in the field. Last night, even uh, Tito Francona said, "Look, he likes being in that two hole because he can be disruptive and get things going." Bangs one up the middle. Quintana's got it again. Goes to second. There's one. No chance at a double play this time. Yeah, they were smart to hold on to that one. We got to tell we got to tell Jose to move up on the east side, Andre. That, that sequence didn't flow right there for the double play. It gets right back to him, one hopper. But watch as he gets just slowed everything down. It was a bad feed. You know he didn't get him in motion to, with a good hard throw to where they could turn it because Ramirez could get down the line, and by the time Sanchez got it, he realized he wasn't going to turn it. Well. It's almost like you, you catch a break if you're Cleveland then and let's see if they can take yeah. advantage of it I mean, there's a play you, you certainly could have uh, could usually have been a, a double play ball usually a comebackers a, a, a one double play. Yeah. Yes Well, they're gonna get an extra out in the inning which is Brantley hit off the plate for ball one Fly ball to center field and Eaton got a terrific read on it. He broke in perfectly, makes the catch, inning over. Tried strands a pair, middle of the third, one nothing Cleveland.
Reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Bottom third of the White Sox order coming up here in the bottom of the third inning. Trevor Bauer sharp here at the outset. Good fastball command. Really good breaking ball slider and curveball. So far tonight. And a fastball gets ahead of Ramirez 0 and 1. And here's that curveball. That one didn't quite make the strike zone. 1 and 1. Well, you can see Ramirez that front foot. He is right on the plate. And then a slider away. He pulled off of 1 and 2. He's starting to get hot. He's hit in 11 of his last 12 games. Well, he really started the year off hot last year. Another good pitch. Good throw by Avilas across the diamond, one down. Sometimes those slow hit balls, you'll see third baseman hurry it a little bit because the ball doesn't get to him quickly. But Avilas, steady as she goes. It's all about knowing uh, the base runner who's going down the line that in internal clock that you have as an infielder. Yeah. You know that you that's all part of knowing the defense is knowing how fast that runner is going to get down the line and what you have to do to get rid of it. I'm not sure I saw or have seen anybody better than Omar Vizquel. No, he was with that internal clock. He got everybody by a half step. Right. It didn't matter if you if you went down the line at three five or you went down in four five. Yeah, it could have been Benji Molina. Y yeah. Right. Or it could have been the fastest guy in the league. It didn't matter. The one two. Two two pitch to Flowers. Left field Brantley. Makes the grab two away. Well 10,000 fans will receive a 1975 replica jersey. That's courtesy of Shears. That'll take place Saturday. The Indians will take on the Reds and it's one of those unique red jerseys worn by Frank Robinson. Boog, Buddy, the boys. We saw some pictures today. Didn't yeah. We? In the food room of the red jerseys back in 1975. Go to Indians.com. Should ask Buddy if we could have taken taken that uh, that photo home with us. Oh, he somebody sent it to him. Now I know I've got a, a couple of those in the basement. Yeah. Bring it in. And... I want to I want everybody to see your posture. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That 1977 <laughs> team photo. Talk about George Jefferson. Yeah, you could have given right. him a run for his money in that picture. <laughs> you had the chest all puffed out, ready to strut. <laughs> one one to Sanchez. Ground ball to first. Routine play. Moss will take it himself. And Trevor Bauer cruises through the third. One nothing Cleveland.
One nothing Cleveland fourth inning. And we'll go four, five, and six for Cleveland. It will be Ryan Rayburn, Nick Swisher, and Mike Avilas. At the knees, a strike. Down the right side, but that's going to slice out of play. Hey, when we were in Texas, we got uh, got those uh, chocolate zucchini muffins, right, from uh, the Vandersauls, Patty and Jeff. Well, her daughter is here in Chicago, Katie, and she sent us up some brownies last night that were just. <laughs> Outstanding. So we got a little rivalry going between mom and daughter. <laughs> Who's the better baker? We're gonna have to have a bake off. Well, but thanks to Katie, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, Katie and her husband. Her, she married. She's an Indians fan, but she married a Cubs fan. So they're gonna be going at it later this summer when the Indians and Cubs meet for four straight. Two in Chicago. Two in right. Mid June, I believe that is. Yeah. June 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. Know your schedule. Pop up to right field. Garcia is there. One down. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Ball's given up some home runs this year, hasn't he? He sure has. Nick Swisher, a base hit his first time up. Smacked one through the left side of the infield. And it takes a strike. Rounds this one in the hole, but Ramirez is there this time. Two down. Here for the second annual Velasano bike ride for cancer research, July 17th through the 19th. There's an option for everyone. Six different routes that start and finish in downtown Cleveland, including one and two day rides. Every dollar raised by Velasano participants benefits cancer research at Cleveland Clinic. So spread the word and bike to cure. Get involved. Visit Velasano.org. Mike Avilas takes a fast wall, a fastball for a strike. He bounced one back to the mound his first time up that turned into a double play. The Indians had at least a one hit in each of the first three innings. Right now, though, Quintana trying to Set him down one, two, three for the first time tonight. Avila says, not so fast. Yeah, he heard you. The Indians have a hit in every inning now. With a two out knocked by Avila. <laughs> the only difference, they were all leadoff hits. That leadoff man was on. This time they get a two out single. And Mike puts a good swing on a fastball and takes it to right field. Now, well, Brandon Moss gets a chance. With a runner aboard, struck out his first time up. Moss got the start last night, not originally in the lineup, but with Carlos Santana ailing, bothered by bad back. Moss got the call and he went one for three, a little squib hit off the end of the bat against. The left hander Chris Sale. Let's go down to Andre. Any update on Santana and that 
back? Yeah, he's getting closer to playing. Last night he wasn't even possible to be a pinch hitter. Tonight it's possible that he could pinch hit. Back is getting better. I think today is the last day they want to just get him through, work him out, keep some heat on that back, but hope to have him back in the lineup tomorrow, guys. All right. Tough to keep the heat on tonight. Yeah. He better be in the clubhouse. The 1 1. Moss drives one high in the air, left center. Cabrera calls for it, and the left fielder makes the catch. No runs a hit, a man left. Middle of the fourth, it's still Cleveland 1, Chicago nothing. Here's our Levin player profile tonight. One nothing. Indians lead it. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up. Out of Springfield, Ohio. One of four graduates to get to the big leagues, including our buddy Dave Burba. Pitcher Rick White he used to be an Indian. Originally a 19th round pick of the D-backs. And yes, he did attend the same alma mater as Court Berry Trip, but we won't hold that against him. Mike Avilas with a terrific nice play. play. Nice play. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, you got to battle with that tarp, but you know, this is where outfield helps him, where he, you just see him take a peek at the tarp, and then all of a sudden he realized where he was on the field. That's a, a nice running catch. Melky Cabrera fouled out his only time up. Two balls, no strikes. Beautiful pitch. I mean, he's been changing speeds effectively, almost like hitters are in a rocking chair. They're, they go back, he goes in, they go in, he goes back. Yeah, he's he's mixed it very well tonight. Ramirez calling Avilas off. Two down here in the fourth. Well, grab some friends, catch a game at the new corner bar with the $13 district ticket. It's presented by Sports Time Ohio and the. The tickets are sold out for May 22nd and 23rd in the district. So hurry and get yours today. Tickets available only at Indians.com. There's a good fastball for a strike. He sees. 
Mix it up, but the fastball primary. There you go. As it usually is. Yeah, establish that fastball. That one was up, and it got roped deep to center. It a one-hop defense for a ground rule double. Well, he smoked that one. First hit of the game. After 11 in a row were retired by Bauer to start. Abreu with a no doubt about it. That was a fastball. It was out, up, over the plate. And the big man extended on it. And look at it. It hits up and it goes off that green. Fencing up there. Comes back into play. So a ground rule double for Abreu. That's number seven on the year. Only his third extra base hit in his last 20 games. Well, let's hope uh, that continues. <laughs> yeah, right. Until we get out of town. Now, Adam LaRoche flied to left. He only saw one pitch his first time up. And LaRoche is a guy who normally will see quite a few pitches. Sixth in the American League in walks. He's drawn 21 so far. Yeah, you put that lefty in between the two right handers, Abreu and Garcia. Three balls, no strikes. Two on four straight. Two on, two out. And obviously, El Garcia will be coming up. First time he's been out of the stretch tonight. And that two out double by Abreu. Four straight then to LaRoche. Garcia went down swinging his first time up. Did that look to you like Bauer working around LaRoche or no. just lost his command a little bit? There? I think coming up working out of the stretch. He just he's got to get a feel for it. This guy is, has been a better hitter so far this year than LaRoche. As far as average wise it sure has a lot better more than 100 points better. But Bauer went right at him with a good fastball to get ahead. And a slider away wouldn't chase. First time up, he couldn't help himself. Garcia went after that pitch. Right. He was able to get him with that breaking ball the first time. But you know, once the hitters see that time, this is where you have to deal with them is when they get runners in scoring position. Because hitters, you know, they, they file that away in that memory bank, know what you got them with before, and they try to, to lay off of it. Again, when you stay ahead of the hitters, you can certainly expand their zone. It makes it a little bit easier. Line drive, base hit, center field. Coming around third, Abreu. Here's a throw all the way to the plate, but well shy. And the White Sox have tied the game. Obviously, Garcia with a two out. RBI single three straight reaching with two outs here in the fourth inning for Chicago. That's what I'm saying. This guy is a good hitter when you get runners in scoring position. He's going to get his 18th RBI and this is a fastball coming in and he pulls the hands in and hits a rope to center field. So all this uh, damage done with two outs. He retired the first 11 hitters he faced. Then the double comes a walk and now a single. And up comes Connor Gillespie who fly to center. His only time up.
Trevor Bauer had retired the first 11 White Sox hitters in a row to start the game. And then three straight reach here in the fourth with two outs. Started with a double by Abreu, then a four pitch walk to LaRoche. And then Garcia delivers the game tying single. Tight with a fastball, two and one. And everything inside here doesn't want to give him any swinging room, but he's fallen behind in the count again ever since he's been in the stretch. Three and one to count with Alexei Ramirez on deck. Pitch, but he doesn't get the call. Second walk in the inning, and the bases are now loaded. It's going to bring out pitching coach Mickey Calloway. See Perez trying to bring that ball back in by a couple of inches. It looked like it was just a little bit in off the dish. The batter will be Alexei Ramirez. Well, he was brazen, wasn't he? He was. Well, as you said, though, he got out of the stretch for the first time tonight. Well, and that's maybe uh, we'll see if he goes from the full windup or he goes from the uh, the stretch with the bases loaded. But there's nothing wrong with going for the full windup. You just got to be careful early in the count with Ramirez coming to the plate. He's a very aggressive hitter, and he'll try and jump on that first pitch fastball. But yeah, I mean. It was the four straight to LaRoche after he went out of the stretch. That's what you when you felt maybe he was pitching around him. I didn't think so. And then Garcia gets the big base hit and then he walks the Gillespie. So the two left handers he walked. And that's going to give Ramirez a chance with the bases full. Now he's going to stay out of the stretch. Yeah, most most pitchers do. I see a, a, some veteran pitchers that go from the full windup. Swing and a foul back. That was a breaking ball, too. That's a good pitch. He loves to get after it early. You remember last night, first and second, nobody out. He went after that first yeah. pitch and popped it up to the infield. The only drawback. I could see in going from the windup with the bases loaded in a two out situation is if the count should go to three and two, well, then, then you almost to have to go to the stretch. Yeah, and to have to switch right. in the middle of an at bat might be a little troublesome. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. I guess it would be comfort. But yeah, in that situation, you wouldn't go from the uh, full windup. One one pitch. Oh, he chased one and helped him out. He sure did. That's all right. He wants that fastball. That shows his aggressiveness at the plate. Now you can go one or two ways. You can stay up there and see if he'll chase the other one or change his eye level and throw that curveball. Well, he chased that breaking ball earlier in uh, his last at bat. So that, I guess, that my thinking here. Let's see what he decides with Roberto Perez.
Well, whatever they can't get on the same page, Bauer shook him off. And Perez is going out to plead his case. I mean, a lot of times catchers will, will go out and say, what do you want to throw here? Let's, let's get a pitch that you, you're comfortable with. But if the catcher has strong feelings about a particular pitch, he'll let that be known as well. One one our score White Sox have him loaded with two down. And a one two pitch coming. Popped right field near the line long run for Rayburn in a thought territory he just he ran out of room. He had to go into a slide just out of self preservation. Yeah that you, you know. run a good 20 30 yards and that fence comes up there in a hurry and that's not a. That's not a collapsible wall. No, and, and you know the field slopes that way for the drainage, and you're running downhill to that last part of it. And yeah, you have to get down. That ball was slicing away from him. He made a great running catch in right center last night on a leadoff hitter. I think it was Ramirez. It was in the eighth inning. Again the one two breaking ball swung out and missed he chased it in the dirt and Bauer disposes of Ramirez but the White Sox get their first run of the game and we're tied at one after four. By the Cleveland Clinic, call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150, the future is tough. It's down to 46 degrees. And that wind's still coming in out of the north, so it has kept things very frosty here at the ballpark in Chicago. 1-1 one, one our score, fifth inning. And Roberto Perez to lead off for the tribe. The Indians have a hit in every inning tonight. The only one that led to a run, a leadoff triple by Jason Kipnis in the first. Him back off the plate. And the count is one and one.
Well, if you're a Chicago area sports fan, this is a great time of year. Disappointing, I'm sure, for the locals that the Bulls were knocked out of the playoffs by the Cavaliers, but the Blackhawks are in the Eastern or in the Western Conference Finals. Chance to go to the Stanley Cup. Oh, swinging a hoo nesting in him. Flowers took one right off the noggin. And he whacked his fellow catcher on the backswing. That can't feel good. Oof. Right on the front. Knocks that mask off almost. Two balls, two strikes. Bouncing ball up the middle. Sanchez, the second baseman, will flip it over. One away. Tomorrow night, game three of this four game series between the Indians and the White Sox. Indians Live gets us started at 7 30, and then all the action at 8 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Sean Markham will make his Indians debut, or uh, I should say his uh, start. Yes, yeah, first start. Right. And uh, Carlos Rodon will go for Chicago. We saw him make his debut, and it was a out of the odd, bullpen. odd situation. He came in with the bases loaded. Sure was. That was a strange time. So he'll get his first start against the Indians. Michael Bourne looks at a ball outside. Bourne fly to center in the third. Big curveball, but a little high. Two balls, two strikes. To the breaking ball but missed outside with it. Full count. And he's going to ring him up. Bourne slams his bat down and now he's barking at home plate umpire Brian Knight. Terry Francona takes up the cause from the dugout. Take another look here. See what you think. Comes back with a breaking ball, and he's probably thinking that ball's high. He can't believe it. Now sometimes you just can't, you know, you can't leave it into the hands of the umpire. Third strikeout for Quintana. Kipnis has chased one in the dirt and he kind of nodded out to Quintana almost as if to say, Oh, you got me that time. You fooled me. He got hit by pitch his last time up. I'm just good, glad to see him still in there. Caught him, looked like right on the bottom of his right hand as it wraps around the knob of the bat. Sure did. It had a funny sound to it. On a night like this, too, when it's cold, even if it hit more bat than hand, the vibration's enough to. You know, there's just no give, even if it gets you in the hand, you know, and then it pushes against the bat, so it, it hurts even more so. Line to center. Yes, just off the glove. It tipped off Ramirez's glove. He's looking at his mid as if to say, how did I not catch that? Well, again, they get a two-out single in this. We saw him make a catch like this last night. 
timed beautiful. He gets up there, but it goes off the end of his glove. He thought he might have had it. Did you see it deflect off? Look, Look like at it went off the thumb. It did. It did. He's looking at it right there. So Kibnis gets his second hit. He timed a, a play last night and made a, a beautiful catch like that. Watch last night. This is Murph dog. Had a little more air underneath it. It looks like Kip hit his just a little bit harder and it goes off the thumb of the glove. Good work boys. You know the way that ball hit off his glove. I wonder if off the bat of Jason it was tailing more toward left field too and that. He might have over jumped it. It could have. Had a little sinkage to it. Ramirez rifles one down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Kipnis hits second on his way to third. He's going to be waved home. He will score. Ramirez flying into second base. Jams on the brakes. He's got a two out RBI double and the Indians regain the lead at two to one. Well they come right back and answer that run that the White Sox put on the board with a couple of two out base hits. He tried to throw this ball down and into Ramirez. He got the barrel of the bat out in front. We'll get his. Uh, Fourth double to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Get it down into the corner and watch Kipnis run. He does just that. No play at home plate. Ramirez in with a double. And again, Ramirez continues to have good at bats in this number two hole. Maybe just maybe Terry Francona has found something here. Michael Brantley drove in a run on the first. He flied to center to end the third. A couple of runners on base. He hit a line drive, but it was right in the path of Adam Eaton in center field. That's uh, the Indians about hit the White Sox six to two. That Ramirez double or second extra base hit had something to do with it. You remember Kipnis led off the game with a triple. Mm -hmm. Blocked by Flowers. That was way over in the other batter's box. That big body came over and knocked it down and kept it right in front of him. Watch that whole body slide over there and just hit it off the glove and just pushed it out in front of him. Nicely done. Reached for it and just punches it over to third. Gillespie will throw him out. But the Indians strike with some two out magic of their own. A base hit by Kipnis, an RBI double by Ramirez. 2 1 Cleveland.
Carlos Santana. Andre not reporting earlier that very likely he'll be back in the lineup tomorrow. For Chicago here in the bottom of the fifth, it will be Tyler Flowers, Carlos Sanchez, and Adam Eaton. The White Sox did lasting came with two outs and nobody on. Base hit in the left field. Perfectly placed between third and short. And the White Sox have their leadoff man aboard for the first time tonight. Here's our great clip of the game from last night. Corey Kluber followed up his 18 strikeout performance with a dozen more. He went nine innings and allowed just one run. Walked one struck out or a lot five hits. And the only run came home on a goofy wild pitch that didn't get more than 10 feet from home plate. Carlos Sanchez a ground out his only time up. Sanchez ended last night's game with an RBI hit down the left field line in the 10th. Foul first base side. That ball he got a base hit on was down and away. You know, it, it, he was. Fell behind in the count on a couple of good high fastballs, and then he got one down to his liking and lined it down the left field line. He bunts, and Avila slipped to second, goes to first to get the out. One away. Looked like Avila slipped a little bit. He did as he went to field that ball. <laughs> How about some more Corey Kluber? Here's our T-Mobile game changer. 11 times he's punched out 10 or more without allowing a run. For two, he's grounded out, fouled out. Guy that did the damage last night, that triple off Corey Clover. And he's the one that ended up scoring on that wild pitch back in the sixth inning. So one out triple, and that ball that got away from Perez never got to the grass around home plate. Perez just barely had enough time to pick it up, come down, and it was, a, as you said, a cat burglar move by him to had a tremendous jump to score and knock the ball out of the glove of Perez. It was one of those run. plays like it's like in basketball when a guy who's who shouldn't shoot beyond 10 feet suddenly lines up and launches one from beyond the arc and you're going no 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 it goes through to go yes good job good yeah, job right that was the kind of play that was by Eaton I'm sure his manager Robin Ventura was saying yes, don't go did. and on the appeal Eaton is a strikeout victim two down but. The end result is all that mattered. Yeah, well, you had Chicago. your best hitter, the best hitter at the, at the plate. 
when you had a Bray who wants this ball, doesn't even get to the grass. Kluber had no chance to get there. And there it is, the slide. Perez comes diving head first. And uh, what a jump he got from third. I'll tell you what, that was just a gutsy play. You're right, once you saw the baseball. That tied the game up, and they ended up going on and getting a big hit in the tenth to win it. Fastball strike to Melky Cabrera, who is 0 for 2 tonight. That slow hook just missing one and one. Trouble getting on the page now. Now Bauer agrees and goes with a 1 1. And it's fouled out of play. Tyler Flowers, the tying run. At second base. Bowers one two pitch to Cabrera. And that breaking ball is fouled back. Yeah if he keeps that breaking ball down it's tough to get it in the air and they just beat it on the ground or they're just hitting the top half of the baseball. They've been able to get to the fastball a couple times. Abreu hit the fastball. Garcia got the fastball and, and so did Flowers. All three hits are coming off his fastball, which is okay. Fastball popped to center. Bourne says, I've got this one. Inning over. Five in the books. Cleveland two, Chicago one. Just upload two photos to foxsports.com slash fantastic all star now through June 3rd. Ryan Raber, Nick Swisher, and Mike Avilas for Cleveland here in the sixth inning. Temperature in the upper 40s here in Chicago. Yesterday it was. 80 degrees in the afternoon, but boy, it started to cool off right about the time the game started last yeah, night. It sure did when the sun started to go down. Rayburn bounces one right up the gut and a leadoff single for the tribe here in the sixth inning. And what is that? Four times, four times. they had their leadoff men aboard. Yeah, the first three innings and now here in the sixth, the other two times, two out base hits. 
in the inning. So they scored last inning when they had two out base hits, but this is the first pitch. And gets it up the middle for a base hit. So seven hits now for the tribe. And Nick Swisher, one out of two tonight. Here's the batter. Down low ball one. Check to swing and it's going to go over toward the dugout. There's a one one pitch down low. Jose Quintana just over 80 pitches on the night. Lobs a toss to first where Ryan Rayburn didn't have a big lead. Rayburn has not attempted a steal thus far in the season. Strike is called. Nick not in agreement with home plate umpire Brian Knight. Two and two. Well, he comes right in and slices that inside corner. That's pretty good pitch. Not pretty good pitch to hit, but a good pitch if you're the pitcher. Breaking ball down and in full count. Well, for Jose Quintana, this is more of the same. He's had a lot of games in his career where he's pitched effectively, but he's been in a two to one, two to two, three to two situation where there's just not a lot of offense on his side of the ledger either. Well, a couple of years ago, he had the set a record for the most. No decisions in the area at 17. Yeah. He's had 41 since 2012. Yeah. He's 41 times you go Mr. out there. Mr. ND. Yeah. Well, that's keeping your team in the game and giving your team a chance to win is what it's doing. You know, you give up some runs. Hopefully the offense scores. You get them off the hook. If he's low scoring, they don't score against them. But there's the. No decisions. Mike Leake, who we will face on Friday, has 36 of them. Pitchers in purgatory. 3 2. Up high, ball four. And the first two Indians are aboard to start the sixth. Out comes Don Cooper, the pitching coach. Our in game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Michael Brantley with a sack fly score. Jason Kipnis with the game's first run. Kipnis tripled to start the night. Avisel Garcia got the White Sox back to even when they had four straight reached safely with two outs in the fourth inning. But then the Indians with two outs and nobody on base got a base hit by Kipnis and an RBI double from Ramirez to regain the lead. Now they have their first two on with nobody out in the sixth. And Cooper doing all the talking to Quintana here and Flowers. No action in the Chicago bullpen. So that was just a let's go out and lay down the law kind of a visit. Maybe they didn't like the pitch selection to Swisher felt they were being too, well, too fine. Well right now they're talking about situational 
right here first and second and nobody out about a bunt play what made the infielders you can see are talking to each other what they should do should this happen trying to get the defense aligned right. Well we'll see. With the Vila set to play Mike bounced into a double play in the second inning on a comebacker to the mound then he singled rifled one in the right field. In the fourth. Corner infielders about a step maybe a couple in front of the bags. Avila squares bunts it well up the first baseline nice bunt and Abreu throws to Sanchez covering for out number one Rayburn to third Swisher to second. Well season tickets offer the best perks including savings and access to tribe rewards and today's tribe rewards TV code is Moss and Brandon Moss right now has an opportunity. To add on to this two to one lead with runners at second and third and one out. Let's see if Moss goes after the first pitch that he likes to try to get it in the air, get that run home from third. He will be looking for something elevated that he can hit in the air. Takes inside, ball one. Infield for the White Sox is in, drawn in, cut of the grass all the way around the horn. See the outfield is deep. Ground ball to first. Abreu looks to third. Rayburn has to hold two down. The boss unable to get him home. Now the infield will go back to normal depth, and it will be up to Roberto Perez, who's one for two with a single. That came back in the third inning. Now put Perez on and face Michael Bourne. They'll go with the lefty lefty matchup. Two walks in the inning. Three on the game for Quintana. First time that Roberto Perez has been intentionally walked this year. And for the second inning in a row, the Indians will look for a big two out RBI knock. Let's go back to the studios right now for a Mazda game break. All right. That's up against Johnny Cueto. Yeah. Bases loaded, two outs. Michael Bourne right back to Quintana. Inning over. First two on, nobody out. Indians do not score, though they maintain the lead two to one.
Bottom of the six, Indians leading it two to one. Trevor Bauer has been very good tonight. Well, he's mixed his pitches so well with the curveball. He uh, mixed in his slider. He's had a very good fastball. Changing the eye levels of the hitters. They did their damage with two outs back in the fourth inning where two outs nobody on and then they got a couple of hits in the inning a couple of walks but that was the only run they scored. Well in much like Corey Kluber has succeeded last couple of times out. Get ahead by making quality pitches with your fastball and then bury him with your secondary yeah. stuff. Center field back goes Bourne. He'll grab that and Jose Abreu is retired for out number one. <laughs> Andre, what do you have on Trevor Bauer for us? You know, one thing that we learned from Carlos Carrasco last year is he really learned a lot after he pitched after Corey Kluber. He watched how he did his routine, how he prepared, and how he attacked hitters. Trevor told me after his last start, he's kind of taken on that same thing. We know Trevor is a very smart guy and likes to pay attention to what other guys are doing. He's following along with what Kluber is doing against St. Louis, and he's been following the routine so far tonight as well. I'll tell you what, it's fun to watch Corey Kluber pitch every five days. If you don't learn something watching him, you got to be crazy. Well, and even more so, look, it's one thing to watch a guy when it's when everything's going well. And it's easy to say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just going to do what he does. But what I've been impressed with Kluber this year is, you know, things weren't going perfectly for him there for a while. And yet he was able to make the adjustment without a lot of hullabaloo and a lot of fanfare and just kind of whether it's getting back to basics or whatever you want to call it, you know. He, he's been just, he's been maybe better in his last two starts he's been, than he was last year. Yeah, he's been dynamite. Just a matter of run support. In the dirt. Two holes, two strikes. LaRoche flied the left on the first pitch he saw in the second inning. Walked on four pitches in the fourth. Now it's two and two with one out in the sixth inning. And that was a good breaking ball and he laid off it. Full count. Last ball up and away. Second walk of the night for LaRoche. And it will bring up obviously El Garcia. Who had the two out RBI hit in the fourth, plating Chicago's only run of the night so far. Foul back. <laughs> Double hit it. Pitch. Garcia lays off low and away. Right back to Bauer. He'll go to the bag at second for one on the first. Not in time. Garcia runs well. He's going to turn and go to second. Moss, his throw, not in time. And so Garcia gets in the scoring position with two outs. Thought maybe it was hit hard enough to get out of the inning, but the problem was Bauer had to wait for somebody to get to the bag before he could. Well, go. that's deliver. communication right there. You've got to communicate and know what's going to happen when that ball comes back to you. Normally they'll look back. Look at Kipna started it and then stop and then Ramirez comes into play so that tells me Ramirez wasn't over there in time and then the throw was a terrible throw so it'll be an error 
And that's just not knowing who was covering. You're right. That's a communication breakdown that you have to know. They should be out of the inning. So the error to Ramirez allows Garcia to get into scoring position. Right. And give them an opportunity. That should have been a double play ball. Although the big man Garcia can run because after the ball got by him, he kicked it in gear to get himself into scoring position by the time Moss could retrieve it. And it will give Connor Gillespie a chance to bat with a runner in scoring position. Walked his last time up, fly to center back in the second inning. Kill. He's been pitching a lot of the left handers inside today with his fastball. See if Trevor can pick up his defense here with two outs. He might have chased one that time. Fastball that was riding up out of the zone, one and two. It was, you're right, he did chase him. But we've witnessed a couple of these White Sox hitters going after that high fastball off him today. Helping him out, expanding the strike zone. Bauer, a chance to get out of the inning right here. With that curveball. Taking him off the high fastball. Spiked it. Yeah, he did. And it's two and two. We've uh, we've seen him do that a lot. That looks like it hit right at the cut of the grass. It comes in there, and I can't believe. Perez was there. Just yeah, it's not one you're expecting when you're a catcher. Not that, that far out in front. That's almost. Uh, that's about seven to ten feet out in front. Gillespie wouldn't bite. Now it's a full kill. Must be a career 320 hitter against the Indians. Power wants to start all over again with the sides. Let to shake him off a couple of times, or he knows what he wants to throw. He already shook yes once. Three two fought out of play. Trevor Bauer retired the first 11 White Sox hitters in a row to start the game. Then four straight reached safely with two out in the fourth, accounting for the Sox only run. Now the tying run in scoring position here in the sixth with two outs. And the 3 2, strike three called. Bauer locks up Gillespie to end the inning. He's fan five, and through six, the Indians lead it 2 to 1.
by Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Two one Cleveland. Seventh inning. There's infield coach Mike Zarbaugh talking to Ramirez right there. How to catch that ball and go for the double play where he was trying to do it on the run. And he was late getting there to begin with. But no harm because Trevor Barr got the strikeout to get out of it. Jason Kipnis to lead off the seventh for Cleveland. And after going 0 for 3 last night, Kipnis is right back at it. He's reached base safely three times tonight. Triple single, and he was hit by a pitch. He scored two runs. Smash to short. Picked nicely by yeah. Ramirez. That's a tough hop right there, wasn't it? Here's our yellow wood bringing the lumber. Jose Ramirez having a pretty good night. Ramirez walked and stole a base in the first inning. And then that RBI double put the Indians in front in the fifth. Last night, two hits and an RBI. And a chopper to short. Ramirez on the move. Low throw, but dug out by Abreu, two away. <laughs> Up comes Michael Brantley. He drove in the first run of the night with a sack fly. That one hard. But just wide of the first base bag. The one one. Nice. And Brantley. Nice hit. Line drive single to left. Boy went down and got a pitch down of the way and just served it out to left field. So the Indians continue a hit in every inning. Watch him go down and get that ball. Boy, that's a good pitcher's pitch, and he just serves it to left field. That's why you're hitting 330 right there. When you can hit that kind of pitch for a base hit. Look at Kent. Quintana could not believe it. He thought he made a good pitch, which he did. Sometimes you got to tip your cap to the hitter. Well, when you're Quintana and you haven't given up but four hits to left handers all year long, and you see a left hander hit, hit that one, you're going, wait a minute, what's going on? Yeah, well, he gave up two to Kipnis tonight, so there's three to the left hander. How about that, huh? And he'd given he'd up three, given up all, three year. all year, right? Two of them were to Hosmer, and one was to Mustakis. So you can add Kipnis and Brantley to your list. <laughs> Pretty good four pack, right yes, there. Yes, it is. It sure is. Ryan Rayburn, a base hit in the sixth inning that led off the inning. But he was ultimately stranded at third. And all 
likelihood this is the last inning of the night for Quintana as Zach Putnam is getting loose for Chicago. Chase one up high, one and two. Boy, how about Milwaukee spanking Detroit today, eight to one? St. Louis lost in 14 innings to the Mets, two to one. Last night, they took out a little uh, frustration. Maybe yeah, today. they come back today, 10-2 winners. Now the 2-2. Check. Did he go? The appeal. He did not. Dale Scott said he held up. Full count. That'll give Brantley a chance to take off at first. Ooh. I could have a break. Yeah, I think so. And the payoff in the dirt ball four. So Ventura with a decision to make, and he's made up his mind already. Switch hitter, next swisher coming up. And they're going to turn him around to the left side and bring in Zach Putnam. Jose Quintana goes six and two thirds innings. Let's make sure he's going to make, the, he hasn't made the move yet. And he might, maybe he's going to stick with him here. I don't know. I think he's going to stay with him. Yeah, well, he did. You don't see that happen too often anymore, do you? Not with him. Not when the manager goes out, but. You know, he might have just wanted to go out there and look in his eyes and see if he had anything left. Sometimes managers will tell you I went out there. I hadn't made up my mind. I just wanted to look in his eyes and see if he still had some fight and had some fire left or if he was tanked. And obviously he liked what he heard and what he saw. Well, and Swisher's been on twice today. The single, he walked once and also grounded to short. The Indians leading it by a score of two to one here in the seventh inning. And with two down, they've got two aboard. Low ball one. Pop back out of play. Give that young lady credit. She went up there bare hands and all and tried to catch that foul ball. Oh boy, be getting out of the way. I wouldn't even gone after with gloves <laughs> on. <laughs> there are the base runners. Rayburn's at first, Brantley's at second. And a one one to Swisher. Too tall. Two balls and a strike. Well, he's giving him one last chance to try and get his last out here because with the bill is on deck. I'm sure Putnam's up there and ready to come in. Quintana season high 112 pitches his last time out against Minnesota. The 2 1 in there for a strike and that'll even the count. Nick not happy with that call. 
second at bat in a row for him where it's gone potentially from 3 1 to 2 2 based on that call. And both times it's gone against him. Now, last time he was able to wait out the pitcher and draw a walk. Now the 2 2, and he strikes him out. Good fastball. Quintana gets out of it. Indians strand a pair. We've reached the seventh inning stretch with the Indians leading it 2 to 1. Stretch time brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Congratulations from his manager. He yep. gutted it out, got out of a tough spot, kept yep. his team uh, within striking distance. He gave him that one last hitter to get, and he did get Nick Swisher. So well, now he's hoping his offense can come back and bail him out. Trevor wow. Bauer, though, is pitching very good. Six innings, he's allowed just three hits, one run. Yeah, Trevor's been dealing again. You remember in his last start here where he went seven innings. He did not allow a run and left leading that ball game three to nothing and the Sox ended up scoring four in the ninth. And he ended up having a no decision although he pitched very very well and that one run he gave up here back in the fourth is the first run he's given up on the road this year That is right. Action in the tri bullpen as McAllister. Delivers a 2-0 to Ramirez and a breaking ball in for a strike. Looks like Zach McAllister up for the drive right now. Popped up. Maybe playable if Moss can get there. Oh, what a play. He had to reach out. Wasn't quite sure where he was in terms of how close he was to the side rail. One down here in the seventh. Yeah. There again, those two guys on the course today, both Moss and Avilas, they get some time in the outfield, so it's a little different for them when they're on the corners because they can take their eye off the ball and go down and take a peek. They get used to it a little bit because you have to cover some ground in the outfield. The key is getting over to those bleachers or the, the yeah. seats as quickly as you can. Tyler Flowers ropes it foul. Flowers singled in the fifth. Good fastball threw it right by him, 0 2. He's had a good fastball tonight. Oh, 
Oh, and he chased one up high to strike out. That's a half dozen Ks for Trevor Bauer. And there are two down in the seventh. He's been able to elevate his fastball tonight and get some swings and misses at pitches that really are, are not even near the zone, but some of the Sox hitters have gone after it and come up empty. So out number two here in the seventh. Carlos Sanchez sacrificed bunt his last time up. And a fastball strike evens the count. And a good slider down and then one and two to count. And a breaking ball pulled foul. Kluber. Fantastic start yes. last night. Trevor Bauer has followed his lead here this evening. Bauer has gone seven. He's given up just one run on three hits, and he has struck out seven. of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Two one Indians eighth inning and the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen is for Zach Putnam. Who comes on in relief of Jose Quintana. Quintana went seven. Putnam will be facing Mike Avilas, Brandon Moss, Roberto Perez. Now we'll get a pinch hitter. Chisholm Hall going to the dish for Avilas. Fastball for strike one. Lonnie 0 for 1 is a pinch hitter. Chases one down and away. Pretty good two seamer right there from Putnam. This is his first at bat in the series. To 
Did he foul it? Yes, he did. And watch his changeup coming in from. Yeah, he throws that, I think, like a split or two. Just got a piece of it to stay alive. They do have a left hander up and loose and ready in the bullpen. It's a one two pitch. Chased one down and putting him strikes him out. Boy, he just persistence. He stayed right with that pitch and finally got Lonnie to strike out. So one away for Brandon Moss. Stick around for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up next. Moss is 0 for 3. And a pitch outside, ball one. Just going to keep throwing it if they keep swinging. Well, uh, there's no doubt. I mean, that's his uh, his bread and butter. Show him the fastball. Attack with that uh, changeup. Yeah. Sometimes that's more effective to the left-handers than it is the right-handers because does he throw it to the right-handers? He got that one up, and Moss got it up, 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 and away. Brandon Moss with a big home run for the Tribe here in the eighth inning, his sixth on the year, and it makes it a three-to-one Indians lead. Wow, he just got done saying he's just going to keep throwing that split change down and out of the strike zone. Instead, he went back and challenged him, and Moss well, crushed it. Wanted to go up above, up the letter high, but I'll tell you what. Brandon Moss was able to get to that baseball and he smoked it. They thought they had the right pitch in that situation, but uh, I, I guess it wasn't high enough. You got to give Moss credit. He went up top and hit a high fastball, got on top of it, and hit his sixth home run. It looked like it was letter high, but we've seen Moss go up and get that pitch. He likes to, to swing. You know, you think about left-handed hitters, most of them, how they love to go after the, the ball down. Yeah. He likes to get up and look well, at this look. pitch. This is almost right at the letters. It looks like it's above, but he really had a short. He, you see where the barrel head of that bat got to the baseball quickly. He didn't go around it. It came straight down and hit it high. Well, that's an insurance runner. Desperately needed. What did you get with mess around? He had him swinging a dead off speed pitch and tried to sneak a heater by him. Full count for Roberto Perez. And 
and strikes him out looking. Putting him with his second strikeout of the inning. Saturday baseball on Fox Sports 1 continues with the Brewers and the Braves at 3.30 Eastern. Then at 7, it's the return of baseball night in America on Fox as the Cardinals and Royals renew their Missouri rivalry. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern on your home for baseball every Saturday. Fox and Fox Sports 1. Michael Bourne, a swing and a miss. Swung on and missed. There we go again. He comes back with that change up to the left handers, and you can see they're all out in front on that pitch. Very effective. And the 2 2. Full count. Brandon Moss with a home run here in the eighth, making it a 3 1 Indians advantage. Now Bourne awaits a 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes it out. So Putnam gets three strikeouts in the eighth, but Moss gets him for a big insurance homer for the try. Trevor Bauer going to pitch into the eighth inning here tonight. Lonnie Chisnall takes over at third. After a hit for Mike Aviles. Top of the order for Chicago. Well, Bauer's only given up three hits tonight. And all three came in that second time through the order. Yeah. Third time through, only one guy reached, uh, and that was via a walk. 
Well, you had the uh, two out double by Abreu and then another walk the first time he was out of the stretch because he retired the first 11 hitters. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's he's been dealing tonight. He's had great stuff. He has used that fastball nicely. Haven't seen a lot of change ups with him uh, tonight with the you know, he's shown the left handers a couple. Double barrel action in the tribe pin. Bowers 3 1. Swing and a miss, a full count. Again, another hitter going after the high heater. He's had probably a half a dozen swings on that fastball, letter high today. Swings and misses. And a line drive base hit in the center by Eaton on the 3 2 pitch. You know what? He, it's almost like he went right back up there with the same pitch, but Eaton was ready for it. He didn't miss this one. He went up and he got on top of it. That's almost the exact same pitch if you look at it. Wasn't it? Look at that. Yeah. He just stayed on it and maybe put a shorter swing to it. But gets the fourth hit. So the leadoff hitter in the eighth reaches. Malky Cabrera pops it out of play to the left. Fly ball, right field, Rayburn. Just in front of the warning track makes the catch for out number one. Well, he got a high fastball a little above the belt. He got it, but not good enough to get it out of here tonight. And Francona is going to make the move. Going to the bullpen. Bowers night will come to an end after seven and a third innings. And Zach McAllister, no, it's Brian Shaw who will be coming on when we come back. As we promised you earlier, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Trevor Bauer came out firing tonight. First 11 socks all went down in a row. He struck out seven and seven and a third. Walked three. And allowed just one run, though he will be responsible for the man at first base. Well, again, he's. Uh... He's going to be 
in line for the win and hopefully that bullpen can hold on. It cost them a couple of wins this year. Brian Shaw with the first pitch strike to Jose Abreu. Watches it go to the backstop. Down the second goes Adam Eaton. That'll be a pass ball. Right there, that ball cuts and cuts away from Perez. Didn't stay with it. You can see he's upset with himself. Almost looked like maybe he was looking at the runner, took his eye off that pitch at the last moment. Well, he wasn't going anywhere. I know. Yeah, Eaton never took off until the ball got by. Two and one to count for a brave now. Outside and in the dirt, three balls in the strike. Cody Allen already up. So is the left hander Zubchinsky with the left hander hitting Adam LaRoche next. It might be a case where Terry goes to Zubchinsky for LaRoche and goes to Cody after that. Yeah, you could be right. And a 3 1. Ball four. Shaw walks a brave. Tying run aboard. And here comes Frank Cota. So Shaw's on for the one hitter, walks him. He's out. Zipchinski will be coming on when we come back. Getting dicey here in Chi Town. Top three to one, but the White Sox have two on with one out here in the eighth inning. And Martin Zubchinski is into the game now to face one hitter, and that's Adam LaRoche. Yeah, this will be the 19th time for Zubchinski. Well, they have the tying runs on base with one out. And this is the big part of the lineup that you're going to have to deal with here in the eighth inning. This is going to be the save this inning, it looks like. LaRoche has walked his last two times up. And Zepchinski gets ahead with a fastball for strike one.
in the dirt. One and one. LaRoche has now reached base safely 14 in his last 15 games with two walks tonight. Oh for five so far in the series. And it's now two and one. Well, he's falling behind now. Even the two balls, two strikes. Strikes him out, and there are two down in the eighth inning. And back comes Terry Francona. He's going to go to Cody Allen now to try to finish things off. Well, he made a really good pitch right there after he came back and got the count back to even. He gets the strikeout. Timeout in Chicago. 3 1 Indians. By Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It comes your way next here on Sports Time Ohio. 3 1 our score. White Sox with two on, two out. Avisel Garcia will be the batter, and Cody Allen looking for his seventh save of the year. And he'll need four outs in order to secure it. Well, this is the big inning where you're going through the big part of their lineup. They have the tying runs on base. Shaw walked the guy he faced. Trevor Bauer started the inning. Had the leadoff base hit, a long fly ball by Cabrera, and then it's been on the bullpen. So Allen trying to get out of this inning. The fourth pitcher of the inning for Cleveland. And Allen takes aim against Garcia with two on. Ball one, it's a pie.
And Cody Allen with a good fastball. Good location, one and one. A couple of hits for Garcia, three times facing Cody. Shoots it the other way, but foul. Trevor Bauer on your left started this game. In fact, started this inning. Seems like a long time ago he started this inning, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure does. Now the one-two from Cody Allen. And that fastball not tempting enough, too high. Good idea because the Sox hitters have chased some high cheddar tonight. Well, uh, I like it. He knocks him out of his toehold. You know, you don't want him to get too comfortable up there. And that breaking ball got a piece of it. Yeah, he followed it up with a good breaking ball, and Garcia just able to get a piece to stay alive. Cleveland, there's the runners at second and first. Adam Eaton is the runner at second base. Abreu, the tying run at first. And the 2 2 to Garcia. Got him looking. Painted it on the outside corner at 96. Cody Allen gets out of the inning. White Sox strand a pair. We go to the ninth. 3 1 Indians. A frigid night here at U.S. Cellular Field. Left-hander Dan, or, uh, yeah, left-hander Dan Jennings on 15th appearance of the year. He thought it was manager Dan Jennings <laughs> on, huh? <laughs> yeah, left-hander coming up. Jason Kipnis is going to lead off for Cleveland. Started his night with a broken bat. Fly ball to right field that Garcia came in on, went over his head for a triple. He fouled one off of his leg next time up, got hit by a pitch. Then he wrapped a single just over the glove of Alexei Ramirez and scored again. So he scored two of the Indians' three runs tonight. And he might he might be due for a, a long soak in a hot tub after this one. <laughs> no kidding. 
Well, he's had a rough night on the body. And a strike call. Two to Kipnis. Yeah, it's a little bit low. Jason has hit in 10 of his last 11 games. Hitting, I think he's hitting 500 again here in the month of May, right around that 500 mark. Popped up, playable for either Ramirez or Gillespie, and Gillespie, the third baseman, takes it one down. Look back at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. The Indians were able to. You know, hey, they had hits. They had hits in every single inning of this game. So they, they had some traffic against Quintana. Had him out of the stretch. Well, yeah, I mean, Quintana only gave up the two runs, but they did enough to, to get that lead. Turned it over to Bauer, who had very good fastball command. Gave up four hits in his outing. One ball, one strike. Two nights in a row, Jose Ramirez has driven in a run. Flying down the line, and they still got him. Nice throw by Flowers, two away. I was just going to say, Rick, that was the pitch that Quintana tried to get Ramirez to chase in the first inning when Kipnis was down at third base. You know, they tried to get him, right, to, and he right. didn't do it. He laid off and drew the walk. Those were a little too far in. This one was down a little bit more, and it had more of the plate that he got him to chase after. Quintana missed inside where he really couldn't get the barrel out of the ball. To swing, so that was the only difference. Now here's Michael Brantley. Brantley. Drilled a hit to left his last time up. Drove in a run in the first. He was the one that got the sack fly to center. They brought Kipnis home. Going to left field again. And Cabrera makes the catch. Indians go one, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Cody Allen will try to close it out when we come back.
3-1, Indians lead it. Time for the Pat O'Brien play of the game. Back in that eighth inning, it was Marzipchinski who got Adam LaRoche and then Rick Garcia facing Cody Allen. Yeah, I mean, he makes a great pitch right here. Fastball away, gets the call. So a couple of strikeouts by the bullpen to get out of that eighth inning, and that was the big inning. A couple of runners tying runners on base. Now it's up to Cody. Get through the ninth. He's facing Gillespie, Ramirez, and Flowers, and you can see what they've done against him. And they're trying to hold on to that win for Trevor Bauer. Looking for number three. Gillespie 0 for 2 on the night, takes a fastball for a strike. Chase it. No, he did not, says third base umpire Ron Copa. Cody with a 1 1. Good fastball, and it's fouled out of play. And now one ball, two strikes. Two more to go here in Chicago tomorrow night, Thursday night. Both games, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Indians trying to snap Chicago's six game win streak. Up high. And it's two and two. Just threw it right by him, 96 miles an hour. Well placed, too. It was on the outside part of the plate. And Gillespie almost looked like a late swing because maybe he was just trying to reach out and get a piece of it, but it was by him. I'll tell you, Cody's been inside with a couple of fastballs today to brush some hitters back, and, uh, you know, that may neutralize him a little bit. He comes back with that 96, and they have to wait a second before they can go out and get that ball. Well, Alexi Ramirez looks at a ball right down the middle of the plate. I guess it was high. Ball one. Oh, nasty breaking ball. <laughs> Ramirez takes a walk. Again, popped him up. Moss straddling the line in foul ground makes the grab two down. We get a pinch hitter for Tyler Flowers. I think it's Emilio Bonifacio. Yeah, it looks like it. Flowers was one for three tonight. Bonifacio will face Cody Allen with two down. The base is empty, and the Indians leading it three to one. Bonifacio is three for ten as a pinch hitter on the year. Shows bunt takes a strike. And threw it right by him. Again, he's he's rearing back now.
Two strike pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out to end the ball game. Cody Allen gets the four out save. His seventh of the year as the Indians hang on to beat Chicago. Three to one the final score. They even the series at a game of peace. Trevor Bauer gets the win. He goes to three and one. The loss to Jose Quintana. He goes to two and four. With the win, the Indians are now 15 and 23. Chicago falls back to 500 at 18 and 18 on the year. Terrific pitching tonight by Trevor Bauer. Can't say enough about the job he did. And obviously, you have to tip your cap to the bullpen, in particular, Cody Allen. And offensively, they did just enough against a guy who has been tough on them in the past, Jose Quintana. Well, they came back, they scored early in the first, and, you know, it was a chilly night. It was going to be tough to score anyway and, and put a lot of hits together. And you're right, the bullpen came out, even though it did take four uh, pitchers to get three outs in that eighth inning. That's where the big save came in, and Cody Allen came in. And he was throwing the ball outstanding. So the Indians win it. Series even at a game of peace with two to follow here in Chicago. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's. Andre will talk with Brandon Moss, who hit a big home run tonight for Cleveland. That's coming up next. <laughs> 